Hi, my name is Guan Nanxi, 12 years old. For this lesson, we'll be continuing on with the techniques and applications for definite integration. For this lesson of definite integration, we'll be having this example over here, whereas we have double integration boundaries d square root root modulus y minus x squared dx dy, and d is bounded by x is bigger than bigger or equals to negative 1 and smaller or equals to 1 while y is bigger or equals to 0 and smaller or equals to 2 so this is the graph ignore the y equals to x squared for now let us explain it so this is the graph that we have the shaded area over here whereas we have the, this is the area bounded basically Okay, so now that we have gotten this, let me explain the other part. So why is there a y equals to x squared? Well, for integration, you can, you, for integration, when you integrate, hey, you cannot integrate a modulus, and since you cannot integrate a modulus, you need to separate it hey, to parts that are positive no matter what, and negative no matter what and if it's negative you have to add a minus in front and that's where the uh, that's where we need the y equals to x squared the y equals to x squared is to separate part one from this part two so for part one is basically anything within in part one and when you it's always positive in this function over here well, for the part 2 is that it will always be negative, okay? So, for this part, what we're going to have is... And over here for this part... So for this range, which range over here is this? For x, it was still, as you can see, for x over here, it will be in from for this part basically the negative one. So I'm going to do it with respect to y first because over here, for the x we cannot solve it for now. So we are going to do dy dx instead. So the x will always be from um, the negative 1 to the 1 while for the y on the other hand for the positive part it will be from x squared to 2 basically the part above while for the other part that we have to minus basically as long as, it's, as it is within this boundary it will be negative so for this part what we have here is Um, so this part over here, well on the other hand over here, since this part the negative over here, it is within the square root, so for this part what we are going to have instead is x squared minus y dy d x okay so now that we have gotten for this part what we're going to have we can already straight away integrate for y because the x in this case is basically a constant but for this you need a negative for this part okay so what we'll have here is so we can integrate for the square root already so it will be Well, this in front you have a 2 over 3, and then we'll have And then after that we'll also have the next power for the negative part, we'll have Well, for this, we'll need a minus because that the y over here is 
has a negative in front, so you're going to get x squared minus y bracket 3 over 2 from 0 to x squared dx. So now that we have gotten for this power, we're going to have next. Uh, so first we he substitute the boundary inside, whereas when we substitute for the 2, you're going to get 2 over 3 integral negative 1 to 1, y. So the y over here will become 2, so it'll become 2 minus x squared 3 over 2. And then after that, we'll, so supposing it was, so over here minus this part, right? But as you can see for this part, x squared, when you sub this boundary in over here, you're going to get zero. That means you can ignore it. Well, what about for our next part? So for this minus, again, we have the x squared and again with the zero. So we can move on to the next part. So if we sub 0 in, first of all, the negative is going to cancel out with the minus over here from the boundaries. So you're going to be plus 2 over 3 from negative 1 to 1 x squared to the power of 3 over 2. Which means that this is basically x cubed dx. So for this part, we can already integrate Okay, so for this, as you can see here, you need to have this modulus for this part. So for it can only be the positive part. So over here, when you integrate it, what you're going to get is, so for this, we are going to hold, continue it later. And well, for this part, it will become x to the power of 4 and then the 1 over 4, which causes the 1 over 6. x to the power of 4, negative 1 to 1. So apparently, when you have, so, give me a sec. Oh, uh, wait. So you can separate it into two parts. So for this, you have the, uh, negative 1 to 0, and we can also have the 0 to 1, sorry. And then after that, we'll also have the part which is going to be So it's uh, over here the minus because from the modulus for this part. And now that we have gotten, now that we have gotten this power, you're going to have here. So you can let let. So what will you let x be equal to? So you can let x be equal to square root two sine theta, how whereas, so square root 2 sine theta, how, and then after that over here for this part, what you're going to have is, so what would theta be equal to? So theta would be equal to inverse sine x over square root 2. Wow, what is the range for theta? So the range for theta, it will substitute over here, the negative 1 inside, you're going to get a negative pi over 4. Or it will solve for this part. And if you substitute 1 inside, which is well 2 over 2, it's going to be pi over 4. Well, over here, now that we have gotten this part, so we can differentiate for both of these sides to find dx. So here we have dx is equals to, so here you're going to have your square root 2 d sine theta, whereas when you differentiate it, what you're going to get is square root 2 cosine d 
d theta. Okay, all right. Now that we have gotten this part, what we're going to do is to substitute for this integration, not these two. Okay. So for this part over here, what we're going to have is that. So square two sine theta squared this will become two sine square theta. And then here we'll have the square root two cosine theta d theta. And then for this when you sub it in, you'll have the one and here when you sub it in the two negative cancel each other. You also have the one. So here one over six plus one over six, you're going to get a one over 3 for this part and then for this part you can take out the 2 who, and you would realize that so if you take out the 2 you're going to get 1 minus sine square theta so what is sine square theta plus cosine square theta it is equal to 1 right so that means 1 minus sine square theta is cosine square theta but remember First of all, we have this 2, whereas when we take it out, it will be 2 to the power of 3 over 2. And then after that, hey, you will times this. this. So, so, um, oh, whoops. And then the total the power of 3 over 2 will times with this square root 2 and you're going to get an 8 at the front. And then here we have the boundaries and then after that what we're going to have now is Cosine, so cosine squared to the power of 3 over 2, basically it, it will be cosine to the power of 3 and we will times this with this, which will become cosine sine to the power of 4. And then here we have the d theta. And um, over here, now that you have seen this part, what can we use? So over here, So over here for this part, we can use you can use the double angle formula, which over here cosine square theta is the two cosine square theta is one plus cosine two theta and since this is to the power of four so this will be square and you need to take two of the tools Okay, so now that we have gotten this part, we can expand this part already, right? Okay, so we have gotten this part, so we can integrate for uh, these two parts already, right? Well, for this part, I'll tell, show you later. So we're going to separate this into three different portions. Whereas you're going to have 2 over 3 integral from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. And then for this part, the theta, we can straight up integrate like what I said just now. So what we are going to have here is theta from 
negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. And then for this part, you have plus 2, so the 2 can move inside hey, to match out the cosine 2 theta, whereas you're going to get 2 over 3. Cos cosine integration will become sine 2 theta from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. And now that we have gotten this part, well, for this part, what we're going to have, we're still going to have the integration part. Well, the d theta will become d2 theta. Well, this, you take away 1. Wait, um, whoops. Okay, so now that you have gotten this part, what we're going to have here, so when you substitute this inside, what you're going to get is 2 over 3 times pi over 4, which will end up with pi over 6. And then this minus minus become positive, which will become plus another pi over 6. And then this part you're going to have this, so sine pi over 2 is 1, sine pi. So for this part, you have plus 2 over 3. Then over here, uh, you have minus, but sine negative pi over 4 is, is a negative. So the two negative just cancels each other out, and you have a 2 over 3 again. And then what we're going to have here is that for this part, we're going to have using the same formula again, the, the double angle formula. So instead of cosine 2 pi, it will become 1 plus cosine 4 I mean, cosine 2 theta will become 1 plus cosine 4 theta, d theta plus 1 third. Now you can add these together. So these two add together will become, um, so these three add together will become 5 over 3. And then here we also have the 2 pi over 6 add together, pi over 3 plus 5 over 3 plus 1 over 3 theta and then from pi over 4 to negative pi over 4. And now we have the last part, whereas we need the, uh, we'll change it to 1 over 12 for this part to have a 4, or d, 4 theta. And then we're going to get our sine 4 theta from negative pi over 4 to pi over 4. And we're going to get, so for this part, you're going to get pi over 12, then plus pi over 12. And then here you plus, so for this part, when you put this in, sine pi will be 0, so you can ignore it. Well, for this part, sine negative pi, it will still be 0. So over here, you can just ignore it. And here you get, uh, so if you add these three together, what you're going to get, so these two will become pi over 6. Well, pi over 6 plus pi over 3, we'll have pi over 2 plus 5 over th 3. OK, and this is what we get in the end. So that will be all so for this part. What we mainly did was just the double angle formula, the sine plus cosine. So sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals to 1 and some substitution. And I had to deal with the modulus for the positive and the negative part. So that will be all for this lesson. Last but not least. So let me just show first. Last but not least, thank you for your watching.